Thank you, Andy. Um, I'll speak from the podium since I've got some prepared remarks. Um, I apologize, everybody, <coughs> for arriving a little bit late. Um, I'm actually back in Odessa. I was here yesterday with Senator McCain, uh, was up in Kyiv uh, yesterday evening for some terrific conversations with the Prime Minister uh, and with the President. Uh, Senator McCain, as always, uh, was as strong as you could possibly want in his support for Ukraine and, and the new Ukraine. So uh, I'm back here now. Um, thank you, Andy, for having me with you. Um, I want to give a special note of appreciation to, to Roman and the Lviv Financial Forum for their work on this event um, and moving the forum to Odessa. Um, not only does this format combine two of my favorite Ukrainian cities, um, it also, I think, highlights what for me is one of the real important stories of what's happening in Ukraine right now which is how reform and the transformation of this country is being driven as much as anything from the oblasts, uh, from Lviv, from Odessa, from Kharkiv, from Dnipropetrovsk, and um, coming from the United States where we have a strong federal system. Um, I am a strong believer in that. Um, let me also thank the Association of Ukrainian Stock Traders and the Financial Markets Association of Ukraine for their work on this forum. Um, and, of course, our, our partners at the American Chamber of Commerce, AmCham. Um, uh, they are an incredibly powerful multiplier for the United States government and our partnership with the government of Ukraine. So thank you, Andy, for being here today and for all of your member companies who are part of today's event. Uh, this forum is about highlighting the potential of Ukraine and the Odessa region and determining how business leaders and investors can work to sustain progress how you can demand that things get better by insisting on transparency and fair rules. Without these things, business can't survive and investors will not invest. And in, from that perspective, um, I'm very encouraged by what I heard of Dmitry Shimkiv's remarks as both start and finish on the theme of anti-corruption, I think is an important message for all of us. Um, through my time here in Ukraine, um, over two years now, I've been continually impressed by the Ukrainian people's demand for accountability. Uh, during the revolution of dignity and everyday sense, Ukrainians have persevered, often at great personal cost, in order to determine their futures. And Ukraine's leaders are listening. Despite an invader in the East using weapons and words to weaken, dispirit, and distract, national, regional, and local officials are moving forward with difficult political and economic reforms to bring Ukraine closer to its chosen European future. However, they, we, must not ignore an equally tenacious enemy set on undermining Ukraine's economic success, one that is equally dangerous to Ukraine's future, and that enemy, of course, is corruption. Corruption kills productivity and smothers in inspiration. Ideas are lost in its shadow. Innovation and entrepreneurship lag under the weight of bribery, backroom dealing, and bullying. These old ways are not worthy of today's Ukraine. Those who gave their lives last year on the Maidan or recent weeks in the ATO did not sacrifice themselves for business as usual. The sons, brothers, sisters, and mothers defending Ukraine in Donbas today are not there to preserve the status quo. They deserve and demand better. And those of us here today know that Ukraine can and must address the problem of corruption. You, Ukraine's business leaders, investors, prospective investors, and partners, all who want to do business here can help. You can refuse to participate in corrupt business practices. You can insist that when corruption is found, arrests are made, followed by thorough and properly, invest properly implemented investigations. And then, when warranted, the guilty should be convicted and punished according to the law. The United States is helping to build Ukraine's capacity successfully to fight corruption, expose the guilty, and see them punished appropriately. And we're helping to do it here in Odessa, and I'll give you a few examples of how. First, 
the U.S. government is developing a program to provide training for every judge, prosecutor, and defense attorney in Ob Odessa Oblast in the adversarial process that is envisioned for criminal proceedings under the new Criminal Procedure Code. We hope that this pilot project will demonstrate how Ukraine's criminal processes can be made more effective. And if it's successful, this project can be a model for the rest of Ukraine. Second, we've pa partnered with the Ministry of Eternal Affairs and Odessa to deploy the new patrol police. And I don't need to go on about that since Dmitry already did that. The presence of these officers is a concrete demonstration of how Ukraine is changing. But most importantly, in my view, the new patrol police is building trust with the public. That trust is giving rise to confidence, the confidence to work together to expose and fight petty corruption that stifles small businesses and intimidates average citizens. Third, we are funding a team of Ukrainian, regional, and international experts who are working with Governor Saakashvili to flesh out an anti-corruption and deregulation agenda for Odessa Oblast. Odessa's vision for reform is transformative. If successful, Odessa can be a model of transparent, accountable government and businesses. It will be a symbol of success in the new Ukraine. Odessa has long been known for corruption, and, but now is Odessa's chance to come clean. Investment and opportunity, I am confident, will follow. I know that President Poroshenko and Prime Minister Yatsenyuk understand the importance of this issue and recognize that business as usual will present to Ukraine's hopes, then recognize the threat that business as usual presents to Ukraine's hopes for political and economic transformation. However, there is one glaring problem that threatens all of the good work that regional leaders here in Odessa, in Kharkiv, in Lviv, and elsewhere are doing to improve the business climate and build a new model of government that serves the people. That problem hinders everything that the Rada, the Cabinet, and the National Reform Council and others are doing to push political and economic reforms forward and make life better for, Ukrainian, for Ukrainians. And it flies in the face of what the revolution of dignity is meant to achieve. That obstacle is the failure of the institution of the Prosecutor General of Ukraine to successfully fight internal corruption. Rather than supporting Ukraine's reforms and working to root out corruption, corrupt actors within the Prosecutor General's office are making things worse by openly and aggressively undermining reform. In defiance of Ukraine's leaders, these bad actors regularly hinder efforts to investigate and prosecute corrupt officials within the Prosecutor General's office. They intimidate and obstruct the efforts of those working honestly on reform initiatives within that same office. The United States stands behind those who challenge these bad actors. We applaud the work of the newly established Inspector General's Office in the PGO, led by David Sakharvalidze and Vitaly Kosko. Their investigations into corruption within the PGO have, deter have delivered important arrests and have sent the signal that those who abuse their official positions as prosecutors will be investigated and themselves prosecuted. I encourage all of you to speak up and back these brave investigators and prosecutors. Give them the resources and support to successfully prosecute these and future cases. We have learned that there have been times that the PGO not only did not support investigations into corruption, but rather undermined prosecutors working on legitimate prosecution cases. For example, in the case of former ecology minister Mikola Zolchevsky, UK authorities seized $23 million in illicit assets that belonged to the Ukrainian people. Officials at the PGO's office were asked by the UK to send documents supporting the seizure. Instead, 
They sent letters to Zolchewski's attorneys attesting that there was no case against him. And as a result, the money was freed by the UK court, and shortly thereafter, $23 million of the Ukrainian people's money moved to accounts in Cyprus. The misconduct by the PGO officials who wrote those letters should be investigated, and those responsible for subverting these cases by authorizing those letters should, at a minimum, be immediately terminated. Even as we support the work of the new Anti-Corruption Commission and the recruitment of new prosecutors, we have encouraged Prosecutor General Shokin to empower Deputy Prosecutors Kosko and Sakharilidze to implement reforms and bring to justice those who have violated the law, regardless of rank or status. We are prepared to partner with reformers within the PGO in the fight for anti-corruption, and that's why on August 10th, the United States signed a joint plan of action with Deputy Prosecutor General Sakharilidze to provide $2 million of U.S. assistance in support of reform, anti-corruption, and capacity building in the prosecutor's office. Of course, it is critical that these reforms be undertaken in an open and transparent manner, consistent with the procuracy reform law, international standards, and in coordination with national and international stakeholders, so the Ukrainian people can have full faith and confidence in their laws and those who have sworn to enforce them. There are other cases as well, like those involving former Deputy Chief Prosecutor Shapakin and former Prosecutor Koronets that clearly demonstrate that it is critical to cease intimidation of investigations and investigators, prosecutors, and witnesses. The United States wants to work with Prosecutor General Shokin, so the PGO is leading the fight against corruption. We want the Ukrainian people to have confidence in the Prosecutor General's office and to see the PGO, like the new patrol police, has been reinvented as an institution to serve the citizens of Ukraine. Ukraine has every reason to succeed. This country has resources in abundance. Its highly educated workforce can supply Europe and its neighbors with human capital and competitive products. Its famous black earth already feeds the world. And if you don't have the opportunity today to visit the port, remember that Ukraine exported a record 33.5 million tons of grain last year, much of it here through Odessa, and has tremendous potential to grow even more, we hope partnering with American agricultural and food handling companies. The deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with the EU will help to leverage these natural resources and to help build even more economic success. Ukraine's government, spurred on by an active, engaged, and committed civil society, is continuing difficult reforms in the face of armed aggression and economic hardship. But as I said before, it is up to citizens, businesses, and investors to hold those standing in the way of reform and progress accountable. Work with the reformers, with the new trustworthy authorities like the patrol police and honest civil servants and appointees to make change happen. Think creatively about how to overcome the roadblocks being put up by those like the bad actors in the prosecutor general's office I mentioned before who want to keep the status quo. Do not take no for an answer, but rather work to strengthen your democracy and push for Ukraine's European future. The United States is with you in this difficult process. Through training programs and financial assistance, we're working with Ukraine to make judges independent so they can uphold the law free from political pressure. We continue to support your efforts to build a modern police force and public prosecution service focused on serving the citizens and providing an equal playing field for all. And U.S. business, with the support of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, will continue to look for opportunities to invest in Ukraine, a Ukraine committed to reform, transparency, accountability, and clear rules properly enforced. I ask you to be committed to putting a stop to corruption wherever it is found, even here in Odessa. 
Ukrainians demand an end to demanded an end to business as usual and privileges on the Maidan. Business leaders here today can help by demanding a better, fairer, corruption-free environment to invest and create opportunities for the future. In closing, and speaking of creating opportunities, I take great pleasure in announcing that U.S. Secretary of Commerce Penny Pritzker will return to Kyiv next month. During her visit, Secretary Pritzker will take a serious look at what Ukraine has accomplished since her last visit. I'm confident she will see a government and business community serious about reforms and ready to establish more connections and partnerships with U.S. businesses and investors. As the United States Ambassador to Ukraine, I can assure you we stand with you and expect you will prevail. Slava Ukraini. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador, for your support and the support of